Jan Blahovic versus Israel Adesanya. Now, what really happened in this fight? A closely contested bout where Jan Blahovic not only became the first one to defeat Israel Adesanya, he beat him in the striking, he beat him in the grappling, he outfainted him, he beat him in a tactical fight, long range, all the advantages that Adesanya was supposed to have. The 38 year old beat him at it and ultimately won four rounds out of the five, putting a bunch of the doubters on notice. And not only that, just like I was explaining for weeks now, Jan Blahovic could not be underestimated. There is no way that Adesanya would have ran through him. And this fight spoke to that. Adesanya had great respect for Jan's power. They both showed a lot of respect for each other's countering ability, as they both are counterpunchers. So the fight ultimately became a distance game or a grappling game. It was either extremely short range where it was in the clinch or it was at kicking range the entire fight. Neither of these two wanted to stay around in punching distance. And because of that, there was a lot of leg kicks, a lot of body kicks getting thrown. And Adesanya did talk about that he didn't understand why his legs were so quote unquote fatigued in the later rounds. And I honestly think after analyzing the fight, it was a lot of the checks and a lot of the leg kicks that Jan Blachowicz was landing. There were so many checked kicks that went unnoticed in the fight. It does a lot of damage, especially fighting a guy much bigger than you. Jan Blachowicz is a thick man with big legs. When you're smaller than him and he's checking your kicks, it's going to return even more damage. And I think that went a bit unnoticed in this fight. I mean, there was even a moment where Jan leg kicked Adesanya. Adesanya checked the kick and it still blew Adesanya's leg back took out his balance and he got hit by a straight right afterward. A lot was also mentioned about Adesanya's feints and how much Jan Blachowicz was reacting to them and he was reacting very heavy to the feints. But there are a couple things here. The feints never got Jan in any sort of trouble. This is one of the only fights where Izzy's feints did not allow him to capitalize on any given moment. Usually Izzy's feints opened the opponent up so he could fire through some kind of strike. Against Jan Blachowicz, the feints were not that significant. Even though he got the reaction, he never got to the point where he was capitalizing from those reactions. And it's not because Jan was giving so many openings. When Jan was reacting to the feints, he was reacting responsibly to the feints. He was actually putting up tight guards all around, his knee up, his hands up high. There were very little openings for Izzy to capitalize on. And even from the stances that Jan would take after reacting to the feints, he would also counter back or intercept Adesanya. For example, in the first round where he landed a push kick, backing Izzy away so it resets the fight. And another example when you look at the third round, Izzy fainted like he was going to throw a jab to the body, and Jan lowers his right hand in order to parry it, while also putting up his left hand in order to block the right hand from Adesanya. So because he parried the fainting jab from Adesanya, he ultimately took it away from being used. Knowing this, he moves out to his left direction, also putting up that guard so the right hand or the right kick could be blocked. Very responsible defense from Jan Blachowicz. And nothing was mentioned about Jan Blachowicz's feints. Jan actually had some really good feints in this fight as well. They got Izzy to not only react, but he was switching stances from the feints. He wasn't putting up tight guards because of the feints. Ultimately, you can say that Izzy's reactions to Jan's feints were a lot more irresponsible, potentially speaking. I mean, there were so many times where Jan would feint and get out of sight to switch stances. It was almost like he had a magic button or a magic wand to get this specific reaction. If he wanted out of sight to switch stances, he had the button to do it. So not only did Jan Blachowicz outstrike quote unquote the greatest striker in the UFC, he also outfainted the faint master. He pretty much beat Adesanya at his own game and also implemented his own wrestling. On top of that, Jan also had amazing jabs in the fight, constantly catching Adesanya at a distance. And not only that, he would throw it up to the head, so Adesanya would lean away from it, exposing his body, and Jan would target the body, specifically looking for the liver. Not only that, Jan would even set a body kicks off the jab, even on the same side, completely catching Adesanya off guard. Or another way he would use his jab is by flicking it out there to get Adesanya to reach with his hands forward in order to parry it. Adesanya's hands are now occupied as Jan follows up the jab with the left hook over the side where there's a big opening. But the one thing that Adesanya's feints did really well was take away Jan's pressure. So because Jan was reacting so heavy to the feints, it didn't allow him to constantly pressure Adesanya on the cage. If Adesanya is pressed to the cage, he just simply needs to feint one time and Jan will create a lot of distance for Adesanya to get away from the cage. Another thing is, it looked like Adesanya did not think the Jan Blachowicz would be as long as he is. Izzy is used to having the big reach advantage over everybody he fights. But when he fights someone who's relatively the same height and has relative reach, he cannot go by the same methods of using his distance in order to get away from strikes, which is a big reason why he got caught to the head so many times. Look at the difference between the defense of Izzy 
versus Jan Blahovic. Jan was keeping his hands up at all times. He was blocking punches, blocking kicks very effectively. And he would use more lateral head movement, moving his head left and right more than Adesanya was. Yes, he would also lean back on punches. But whenever he leaned away from punches, he always made sure to parry them as well. Where Adesanya wasn't necessarily doing that. He was just leaning back with his head, not using his hands for pretty much anything. Izzy was leaning away. That's how he actually counters everybody. So his instincts of getting away from punches only put him in further danger in this fight. The fundamental defense from Jan Blachowicz was way more effective. Off of the head movement, Jan was able to land a check left hook. He was able to enter even closer and wrap up Adesanya in a body lock. And these usually came when Adesanya was throwing his cross as he doesn't have the best retraction to that punch. He kind of sits still in position for like a second or two before he's able to get out, giving a lot of time for Jan to counter him or clinch up with him. And that counter punch would find home sometimes, but more often Jan was catching Adesanya Adesanya when he was moving forward because there was an absent high guard from Adesanya. The only time Adesanya would use the high guard, especially on his right side, getting prepared for Jan's signature left hook, would be if he entered on Jan, if he actually moved forward, which didn't happen that often. But whenever it did happen, that's the only time you actually saw Adesanya put up his hands. And we look at the moment of the fight where Adesanya was able to land that big left hook in the third round. So right off of the takedown, Jan commits for his left hook, and Adesanya is looking to lean away from it toward his left and land with a right counter hook over the top. The angle of his hook is really high up, looking to land over the shoulder. They both miss, due to them both rotating the same direction, they both miss their punches, and they look to follow up on each other. Jan is looking to land a back fist with the same hand, while Adesanya is leaning back. Jan did not straighten his arm all the way, which is a big reason why it didn't land. If he straightened his arm more, the back fist would have landed on Adesanya. He gave up a bit of reach on his back fist, and Adesanya landed with his longer left hook over the side. Jan actually had his right hand up. He actually had the right defense, but the gloves are four ounces. They're very small gloves. The punch got right behind the guard and connected on Jan clean. Jan actually didn't do that much wrong here except for not straightening up his arm a little bit more. His defense was on point. It's just the unfortunate four ounce gloves. This is a very similar punch that Adesanya knocked out both Robert Whitaker and Paulo Costa with. Just goes to show you, man, Jan has a different level of a chin, able to take a fresh 200 pound Israel Adesanya's biggest shot and didn't even look that hurt by it. But Adesanya definitely had really good moments in the fight. I mean, he landed an unexpected feint into a straight with the same setup, with the same motion that he would throw a straight left with. He used that as a feint and then fired it out right afterward. Jan did not see that coming at all. In fact, you don't see any fighter ever throw this. It doesn't have tremendous power, but it does have enough power to check the opponent, even stun them if it lands correctly, but he landed on Jan's forehead, a pretty hard spot to punch. He also did land a very nice jab to an overhand combo as Jan looked to counter him with a left hook. His punch got on the inside of Jan's looping hook, catching Jan pretty clean, but Jan's chin is just something else, man. He eats the punch like it's a pancake and just comes right back at him, which could be pretty discouraging as Adesanya is hitting him with his best shots and it's just not phasing Jan Blachowicz at all, where he's used to landing these shots in middleweight and everybody gets put away. And ultimately, Jan won the fight pretty comfortably, especially when it hit the ground. Adesanya had nothing for Jan once it hit the mat and it exposed a lot of what Adesanya is capable of on the ground because we don't normally see him there. We don't see him fight a lot of guys that are shooting for takedowns as well. So this was a bit of breath of fresh air to learn about that area from Adesanya when he is anticipated to fight, you know, guys like John Jones and stuff like that. Jan showed to everybody that when you throw a punch at Adesanya, he's very willing to lean away from all of it, exposing his hips. He gives up his hips to the opponent when he does that. So Jan was throwing left hooks or jabs right into a double leg and getting it smoothly, man, with no resistance at all. And then using his size on the ground, completely shutting down Adesanya. After seeing this fight and how easily he was taken to the ground, and even worse, how easily he was held down by the bigger man, we can all conclude John Jones would have destroyed Israel Adesanya. And ultimately, Jan Blachowicz had an amazing performance tonight, 38 years young, in his prime, and putting together a streak that is one of the best in the sport right now. He was a guy that was almost cut from the UFC because he wasn't performing that well. And now to be on this five-fight win streak, two title fights, his last one now against an undefeated middleweight champion who looks absolutely dominant in that division. He is not only going to be regarded as a legend of the sport, but he may be regarded as the best European of all time. So great performance by Jan Blachowicz. Blachowicz, pretty good effort from Israel Adesanya attempting to come up to 205 pounds and take out the champion. And I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.